Hey there, colleague. How in this sweet, ever-loving world are you doing? How's teaching going? How's education going? How's it going? In this video, I want to talk about what to do when there's too many books to read and you don't have any time. What do you do? Is there like anything to this idea of speed reading? No, no, there's not. Fun story. When I was a kid, my parents just really loved me. They loved that I was a little nerdy reader boy. And they got me a set of cassette tapes from a guy selling a cassette tape set of speed reading tips. And it was all like, you know, kind of the thing where you sort of kind of do this. I just never really got the hang of that and find it to be a completely nightmarish concept. So what we're talking about today is, is not that. It's about enjoying the reading process, but also sometimes significantly decreasing the time that we give it, just because we have to or because maybe we should. So I'm gonna be stealing from one of the goats, Mortimer Adler, Charles Van Doren, How to Read a Book, the classic of classics about reading. And these guys are obsessed with intelligent reading, reading on purpose, reading on purpose. Kind of a no-brainer, right? except they apply tons of brain power to this question of how do you read with maximum intelligence? And they talk about three types of reading in their book. The most elaborate type, analytical reading, is the type that most of us in the 21st century who have a college education, most of us default to this type of reading. We think that if I'm gonna read this book, I have to go through, start on the first page, and I just have to carefully read this thing and go through every single word. And I can't say that I've read this book until I get all the way to the end. Okay, or if I was taking this book, same thing. I've got to read every single word that he wrote before I can mark it as read on my Goodreads. <sighs> but if you're strapped for time, or if you're just not sure a book is gonna be the best book ever on the topic, then you shouldn't go right to analytical reading. Instead, you should do what Adler and Van Doren call inspectional reading. And inspectional reading is really simple, at least in my simple mind, it's very simple, because what you're doing is basically saying, okay, I don't know if this book's gonna be good or not, but let's say I only had one hour to read it. Let's imagine I have a book club that's meeting to discuss this whole book in one hour. And for whatever reason, I'm behind. I've not read a single word of this book. What would I do if I was in that situation? Then you actually set a timer on your phone for an hour and you find a cozy spot to read, maybe a little zero grav chair in the woods. I don't know, you do you little hammock time, or just sitting at an uncomfortable school desk, that's fine too. And now that you only have an hour, you're gonna have to be super strategic. So you're not gonna read every word this guy wrote, not possible. So what are you gonna do? I mean, I'm gonna real quick, let's take a look here. Okay, table of contents, truth about time, the five permissions, the next step. Okay, sounds like five permissions is going to be this, his practical actionable tips. And then his first section there, the first three chapters, truth about time are gonna be kind of his principles of time management. Introduction, thank you. What's his name? Thank you, Rory Vaden. This is exactly what introduction of nonfiction books do. They tell you where the author's coming from. Why are they writing this book? What are their central arguments? If you've only got an hour, you're for sure gonna read the intro of whatever book it is. Okay, let's say that it's a book that I think is way worth the time of analytical reading. There's one year in my career where I only read this book. I read it over and over and over and over again. This is not my original copy. My original copy is the orange one, the first edition. My original copy is destroyed. This, this one's worth more than an inspectional read. But again, let's just pretend that I didn't have that. I only had an hour. So I'm gonna read Mike Smoker's introduction. And just like so many introductions, all right, he's gonna lay out for me exactly where he's going. Look at this, about this book. Now, what am I gonna do with that? Let's say I've read my introduction on both of these books. I've got 50 minutes left. Well, I'm gonna go where I think I'll get the most bang for my buck. What am I most interested in? Did I get a strong sense in Rory's introduction that his philosophy of time management is gonna be valuable? Well, then I'm probably gonna go to his part one, okay? I'm gonna go to his, uh, the truth about time. But if I thought, eh, sounds pretty standard, I'm gonna go to his five permissions. And look, he's even got them labeled out here. Eliminate, the permission to ignore. Automate, permission to invest, so on and so forth. Procrastinate, the permission of incomplete. That's kind of the title of his book, so I'm guessing he really swings for the fence there. Maybe I'll go to that chapter next. And then typically the last thing that you're gonna do after you peruse some chapters, Give yourself at least 10 minutes to read the conclusion. That's that's it, that's inspectional reading. After that reading, will you have perfectly read the book? Of course not. Does perfectly reading a book exist? Is, is that even an actual thing that people are able to do? What does that mean? Does me putting my eyes over every single word equal something that's magically valuable? No, we're reading books to talk to authors, to understand what people have taken the time to put into super organized, research-based form. I mean, that's, that's, 
kind of my take on books. So look, the next time that you got a book to read, I don't care how important you think the book is, if it's a nonfiction book, try an inspectional read. Set your timer for an hour and just try this. And after that hour, you should at least know, is this thing worth more of my time? And I don't know about Rory Vaden. I've not inspectionally read this yet. I know that Mike Schmoker would be worth more time. So then I'd say, okay, after my inspectional read, now I'm gonna do an analytical read. All right, any other reading tips that you got for professional reading? Listen, we only have so much time in our life. We can't be reading all the time, can we? I, I mean, I'd like to read a lot of the time, but there are these things called people around. They need relationship, and apparently I do too, so can't just read books all the time. If you like the video, do me a favor and subscribe. Helps the channel, helps me. Just a teacher like you, educator like you, doing the work every day in a classroom not so far away. Cheers, colleague.